and action. Welcome back to Show and Tell. I'm Billy and I'm your host. I'm recording this evening from my Manhattan high rise apartment. Behind me, you see the lights of the Con Edison building. That's our local electric company. So I can tell you that whenever there's a power outage in New York, my neighborhood is amongst the first to get its power back because they want their power back. This week has been an exciting week for me because of the collaboration with Roxanne Richardson. I have many new subscribers on this channel. So if you have come to me by way of Roxanne, let me say thank you for taking the leap of faith and hopping over here to join me on this side. And of course, a huge thank you to Roxanne for interviewing me and for agreeing to be on my last episode. So welcome to all of these new viewers. I'm happy to have you here and I hope that you'll enjoy what I'm doing. Anyway, today has been a dreadful snafu for me. I had three fellow knitters who have been knitting along with me on Susan Crawford's Genie, which is from her Vintage Shetland Project book. And everything that could go wrong went wrong. I have some footage that I've been able to salvage, but I had a slew of technical difficulties when I tried to go live with them from Zoom over to YouTube. So, but I'm going to try and salvage some salient bits that each of them contributed to today's call. And I apologize to any of you who might have been over on YouTube waiting for this to happen. Um, I'll try and do better next time. Ah, technology, the bane of our existence, huh? Courtney, have you got another Susan Crawford sweater on? I do. It's beautiful. Just which beautiful. one is one? Courtney, which one is that called? Um, I'll have to look it up. I don't remember off the top of my head. I know it's a twin set. Okay. There's a matching cardigan that goes with it that has just the fair aisle at the top right here. So I decided to try and uh, recoup some of the day and try and recap a little bit of what we had talked about earlier on. And they'll be back with me in a couple more weeks, so you'll get to see them. Um, there are also several episodes prior to today's that went off without a hitch. So. I'll put links where you can go back and look at them. Um, this is my genie, all nine colors of it. And if you look at episode four of the genie cow, you'll see how much progress I have made since then. Um, I'll try and put a little snip in here of Nancy's progress and of Dawn's progress. Courtney's already finished hers, so you could see her, her finished one in the first knit along episode. She's wearing it. Um, but let me try and remember some of the things that we talked about. The sound was just completely inaudible, and it, I didn't want to do that to you. Um, well, for one thing, Nancy talked about freight check. She has a little bottle of stuff that you apply it to the edges of your steak. And she said it really stiffens it like um, sizing would be and prevents it from fraying. So she's pretty confident that that's going to hold her steaks well. And she also expressed some concern about washing hers because hers is silk. She bought the kit from Susan Crawford. And Courtney had suggested that she might get some information off the ball band. And I had suggested to her, if for some reason that information isn't there, that she could query Susan Crawford. And I'm sure they would tell her just how to wash their yarn. Um, so let me at least show you what the steaking thing is about. This is not a cardigan, it's a pullover. So there's steaks in three places. 
the front neck, which will be V-neck like this. And I marked mine in different colors so that I would be able to find them pretty easily. Um, this yarn, scrap yarn, I'm holding stitches on. That's my center steep. That's the longest one so far. So it's going from here to about here. And I still have some more knitting to do, not a whole lot, but a few more of these stripes. Um, so you can see these stitches that have the vertical striping, I'll be cutting up through there and securing the stitches beside it so that it doesn't all unravel. Similar to this, there are sections on each side. I've marked them with red markers. This is my beginning of the round where I have two reds dangling. And for the arm hole, it's a slightly shorter steep than for the V-neck. So that's one arm hole. And on the other side, I also have a red stitch marker here, just a single one indicating my other armhole so that when I get to those places, I know what I need to do. Um, the decreases for the neckline happen at slightly different times than the decreases for the armholes. So there is a chart and you really need to pay attention to each row of the chart. What I personally did, since my pattern is only a PDF file, I put these sections that involve the decreases onto a digital graph paper using, um, using Stitch Fiddle. And as I complete a row on the chart, I tick that row off, but I have each one marked where the decreases are happening. So I have a pretty good visual and it seems to be working pretty well for me. I don't think I've made too many errors, um, but you'll never see them and I'll never tell. So you got to love this. Every one of these darker color bands is slightly different. Sometimes they're eight pointed stars, sometimes they're hexagons. But even though this is a hexagon and that's a hexagon, the patterns within them are different. I think you can see that. And they alternate between this color arrangement and this color arrangement. Courtney had asked me if I swatched, which of course I did. Um, I swatched in the round using my combination of nine colors. And I tried my colors in different ways where I did not use the kit. I selected my own colors, nine different colors. Um, so I tried to match up to what Susan Crawford did where she used a dark color. I tried to use a dark color where she used lighter colors. I tried to go with lighter colors. And um, I'd love for you to tell me if, if you like it. I think it's going to be very interesting. Um, it's very lightweight. Now, Dawn is using a, a yarn from the Falkland Islands that's a little bit of a sticky wool, and I think it has silk in it. And, and I'll show you. Nancy is using the kit. Courtney also used the kit. Looking back, I didn't start on this till August 20th. And uh, uh, did, you, did you mean, did I'm not sure if Courtney's kit was silk because I think Susan Crawford changed the yarn at some point, but this is 100% extra fine merino. And I love it because it's very thin. I wanted this to be a summer top, it's sleeveless. The pattern calls for it to be sleeveless, but I think you might be able to see, well, it was better in daylight, but this is fairly thin. Um, you could see daylight coming through it. It's a little harder to see at night. 
terms of washing silk, I have not hesitated to wash silk blouses. And I had purchased a very luxurious vintage, I guess you'd call it a dressing gown that's a silk satin. I purchased it from someone on eBay. And when it arrived, it had the the odor that you sometimes smell in ladies' rooms. They use some kind of like a sickeningly sweet disinfectant. It smelled like that. So I researched online how to wash vintage lingerie. And this is what I had suggested to Nancy for her silk genie that she might want to use this technique. You fill a basin with water, Dawn dishwashing liquid, the blue Dawn, you suds it up and then you scoop off all of the bubbles, all the foam. So you just are left with a clear water and then you slide the garment in. I mean, this is more important for something that's silk satin that might show watermarks. I don't think she'd need to do this with her sweater. But what I did was I slid it in so that you don't make any bubble, you don't create any bubbles. And you can just let it so gently agitate it, but you want to stay away from making bubbles if you're doing like a silk blouse, for example. And just handle it very gently. And it was fine. I have washed silk blouses, not often, but I can't imagine sending a sweater to be dry clean that I had hand knit. Anyway, we spent a little bit of time discussing how far along we each are and whether we think that we'll be complete. I'm trying to wrap things up in the next couple of weeks. I do not believe that I will be 100% finished. I might be finished the knitting that's on the chart, but after that, there's still this cutting of the steaks to be done, the securing before I cut. And then there's ribbing around the neck and around the armholes. So I'm really shooting for being done so that I can kick off the collaboration with Roxanne Richardson. I want to, you know, cast on, get started with that probably early November. So even though I've been a monogamous knitter the last few projects, you know, I'm trying really hard to do that it may turn out that I will be knitting on this at the same time as Roxanne and I are knitting on our 1940s collaboration. Part of our dialogue included a conversation about the needles that we use. I had probably mentioned in a prior episode that I am using Chow Gu size one. These are interchangeable. The size one are their minis which is smaller than their smalls. And the minis have their own mini cable. I am getting to the point where I'm probably gonna to have to start doing magic loop because as I'm decreasing, it's getting harder to move my stitches around. I don't have enough wiggle room. Courtney, however, described that she was using, I forget what the brand was, but I think they were also aluminum. Um, she was using DPNs and she described using two DPNs and using the third one. She said, that's a Shetland method. I was not familiar with it. Using the third one to knit around with. And Nancy had mentioned that she has trouble with the chow goose. She has some arthritis and e even using the little rubber twisty thing, she's not able to get these to be tight enough. They loosen up on her. And then if she does make them too tight, then she can't untwist them. So I forget what she said she's using. Hmm, I'll, I'll try and get the name of what needle she's using. I was uh, sort of noticing, uh, you know, with them that my stitch definition isn't as crisp as Dawn's is with the yarn that she's using. So Courtney had asked me if I blocked my swatch. And I said, even though I had 
done it with all the colors and done it in the round, I didn't recollect blocking it. I was just so delighted to get the right gauge because I have to tell you, finding a yarn thin enough to give me 46 stitches in four inches wasn't so easy. I was asking on Ravelry and forums and I was looking at all kinds of websites and there's hardly any yarns that specifically say on a size one needle, you will get 46 stitches to four inches. They're all like, you know, 28 or 32 or uh, I might have even seen 36, but I wasn't seeing 46 anywhere. So we're going to try and meet another one or two times once the end of this month. And then I think once when we're all finished, something like that. So I hope that you're not too disappointed. It was a big disappointment to me to have that whole dialogue with my three fellow knitters go in the waste bucket. But it's a work in progress and um, it's been a very, very long time, a great deal of knitting with still more knitting to come. And I will see you again before my genie is finished. I'm quite certain of that. I have been mentioning the yarn auction that I'm trying to get rolling with. We had our first somewhat successful outing uh, this past weekend. And I'm going to try and continue moving forward with that. But what I wanted to do was tell you a little bit of an anecdote. I was contacted by someone who clearly knew that I was a knitter and thought that I would be interested in this video. She sent me a link that I'm going to put in the show notes below about someone in the European Union who was attending an annual speech in a very large auditorium and she's knitting. I just thought that might interest you to see. Maybe it's a little more acceptable in Europe than it is in the United States, I don't know. I don't know if somebody could sit at the United Nations, for example, and be knitting, but I really don't know. Maybe you'll comment below and tell me if you've seen people in political settings like this. Thanks again for hanging in here with me. This has not been easy and you can see I'm burning the midnight oil. I'll see you next time. else that we should talk about just plodding along I, I what I said to all of you in a little message was I do not believe that I would have stayed the course this many months day after day on this sweater without the support of all of you I think my motivation to keep on was th that kit was so expensive. Uh, I yeah. usually don't spend nearly that much for yarn and I, there was no way I was going to toss that in the closet. Uh, that was just too much invested a in time and money. It's, it's an expensive endeavor and I wasn't going to stop just because I got tired. 
of course I don't get tired often I get a little bored but I, I do I, I focus in on something and I just don't let go how, how did you uh block it I mean it's silk and cashmere I I, I, I usually dunk them I in water I wet I wet blocked it you did yeah, oh. I pretty much wet block most of my knitted garments or I, I'm not really big on the steam iron, even though I can and you can do it with wool. Um, I just tend to soak everything and like in the eucalyptus um, wool treatment and then um, just wet block it and stretch it out. And I usually don't do pens or anything like that. I just spread it out on a flat okay. surface with my fingers unless it's like a lace shawl I, that's all I do and um that's usually enough that's the main thing I was concerned about wetting it I didn't know if we could really wet this yeah well how else are you going to wash it if you don't wet it well I had planned to have it dry clean dry clean Ooh. Ooh. that was my future plans but I probably won't even um, have it. Silk, I have silk blouses that I have washed by hand very carefully, no scrubbing. So I would think I've it's never even better. tried to, to wash silk. I always send it to the dry cleaner. Does it say on the ball band how to take care of it? I don't know. I don't know. That's a good question. Oh, she's so smart. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank <Boy>. you. <laughs> I was talking about Courtney. I know. I know. I mean, that would be like the smart thing to do. Yeah. Check the <laughs> band. But I would think that it could be hand washed and something very delicate. Why not? Why not? Well, if you can wet block it, I would guess, yeah, you could wash it. This is very, very thin which I'm happy about because it's sleeveless. I really wanted it for summertime wear. So yeah. I'm, I'm pretty happy with, with it. It's, it's soft, it's not scratchy. Um, I'm just hoping um, that it'll settle down when it's blocked. Let's see, a, could, it, could we see a back side of yours? I, mine's pretty thick because of all the threads. These are, this is not thick. Here's the oh inside. yeah, very light. Oh, yeah. you can see. Yes, I'm holding it up. You can see the light through it. 